Well, welcome back, everyone, to the wrap up. Were those the uh, Randall Raiders Red out there? Raiders out there, absolutely pumped up for tonight's. Home opening game for Randall. That's right, home opening game. They were on a bye last week. On a bye this week is Paladuro looking to recover from their loss to Tesco. So last week, see if the Chris Fisher can get the Dons ready and prepared. But again, 5A, a lot of teams looking to rebound from last week. Canyon falling big to Brownwood. It's certainly a surprise there. Amarillo High fell to Cooper, who was taking on Randall tonight. So, I mean, yeah, a lot of surprises coming in early in the season. That's right. Sandy is playing last night against Odessa High. And that Bronco team, they're fired up this season. They snapped their 15 game winning streak in their first game losing of this streak. losing. Yes, not winning. My bad. <laughs> losing streak last week. They hadn't won a game in like over 700 days. So an incredible win for them. But hey, we're looking to see if the Sandys can stop them. Let's take you out to Bivens. That game being played again last night. We'll pick it that up wasn't here. Bivens. That was down in Rattler Stadium. That's right. Why am I? I'm acting like I was at Bivens last night. I wasn't at Bivens last night, you guys. Again, this is at Rattler Stadium. Nathan Betts there, going to make it inside the lines. The Sandys take the lead 7-0, to zero, but here comes the Broncos answering back as Zay Brown makes a touchdown catch. Then with the momentum, Trey Smith going to connect with Julian Galindo as the Broncos take the lead 14-7. to seven. And Odessa, you guys, they go 2-0 and oh on the season, 28-21. to 21. That would be your final last night at legendary Ratlet Stadium. 0 oh and, oh and 2 to start the, start the season. Very surprised, surprising loss there. Now let's take you out to Lubbock Estacado. This one also played last night against the Dumas Demons. And the Matador is going to strike first. Bo Sims with the quarterback keeper. He dives his way into the end zone. But here comes Dumas. Noah Quintanilla going to hand it off to Javier Martinez. Look at this. Breaking Ooh. off two tackles. Get off me. He's going to make his way into the end zone. Tied the game at seven. Now Estacado going to answer back as Sims rolls out. Check out this, DJ. Look at this. One-handed wow. catch by the tight end, Jalen Turner. A little bit of a mismatch there for Dumas. He's going to run it in for the touchdown. It's a little Rob Gronkowski kind of play uh -huh. there. Then down 28-10, to 10, Dumas still struggling here. It's a bad snap, and the Matadors recover the fumble. They go on to get the huge win, 48 to 17 over Dumas. Huge upset there. All right, let's head out to Kimbrough Stadium. Randall opening the season here. First quarter scoreless. Opening drive for Cooper. Tavian Combs looking to pass. Picked off by Caleb Reynolds. That's going to set up the Raiders. Ensuing drive now. Third and long. Got a little rush here. You know, they took the week off, so Landon Nix looking downfield. Finds nothing. Look at it. He's going to scramble to his right. <laughs> Don't worry about this. I see the sticks. I got the first down. That would lead to a field goal. But then second quarter, 3-0 Randall. New quarterback for Cooper. Brendan Mel going deep for Zy Keith Campbell. Going to take it all the way down to the two. Next play, Elijah Boyd. Going to plow his way into the end zone. That gives Cooper the lead. But Randall would come back strong. They get the win in this one, 22-17. Great way to start the season. Well, let's check in on that Canyon score. Again, this one being played down at Monahan's and Monahan's just gets the win. Wow, there. edges out the Eagles there, 23 to 21. Your final, the Canyon Eagles now going 0 and 2 on the season. We do have Texas Panhandle Sports Network. Phil Woodall joining us on the phone now live. He was there at that game. Phil, you're kind of our our eyes and ears down there. Kind of let us know what what led to this close game down there. All right, pretend I'm number 33, Tyler McAllister of the Monahans Lobos. He rips off three touchdown runs tonight of 70, 42, and 11 yards to score three touchdowns and lead them to the win. Uh, Eagles had a 14 to 7 lead. They had a 50 yard touchdown run by quarterback Reichel and a one yard run by Rowdy Vaughn with 38 seconds left in the half. So they led 14 to 7, got the first possession of the second half, drove it down deep. And then uh, he missed a 24-yard field goal, and coming right back, that's when McAllister got his 42-yard touchdown run. But they had a big punt that pinned Canyon down at the one-yard line uh, midway through the fourth quarter. And I, first thing I said is be careful with the ball. Do not get caught in the end zone. Do not have a penalty. And darn two plays later, a guy named Trojan Terwilliger from Monahans. Tackles Lawton Rifle in the end zone and made it a safety, a two-point uh, lead at 16-14. Uh, to 14. McAllister got his touchdown. Eagles did come back with a buck 52 left in the ballgame and were able to score on a touchdown pass uh, from Lawton Rifle to Kaysen Haggard 
And so that made it uh, 23-21. And they didn't get the onside kick, but Monahan's had a big chop block penalty. So they had third and long, and the Eagles stopped them. But they had a face mask penalty and a the automatic first down, and so they were able to run out the clock and win it 23-21. to 21. So uh, two evenly matched teams. Uh, Canyon's still a work in progress, but they've got some talent on that team. And I want to give out some props to Jonathan Castro tonight. He made a, a big sack, uh, knockdown pass. He also made a great block on a first down run. So he had a really good ball game. So anyway, Canyon's a work in progress, that's for sure. You know, Phil, you had the call last week for Canyon. What kind of changes did you see from him this week to last week? Obviously, we saw the defense, a much better performance there. Just a couple of penalties there at the end cost him the game. Yeah, and uh, it's like uh, Coach uh, Bryant told me, his linebackers do not have any varsity experience, so they're all learning on the run. But they do have an off week this week, and in two weeks they'll head down to Big Spring. And ironically, guess who Monahan's next opponent is? Right back in Monahan's taking on Big Spring. So I imagine some of the coaches will be heading down to Monahan during the off week to take a look at that to see how the Big Spring steers. And they got uh, dope uh, pop by Sweetwater tonight during Sammy Ball Recognition Day. Uh, great Sammy Ball, the quarterback of uh, the TCU Horn Frogs and the Washington Redskins. So uh, it's uh, they're they're a work in progress. They've got some good talent, but uh, give them a chance uh, here uh, as they get ready. Uh, you know, they're going to be on the road in two weeks at Big Spring and then start uh, district at Hereford. And then they finally get it home against Amarillo High. And I, I don't know if they'll even recognize Kimbrough. It's been so long since they've been there. Well, Phil, we well, thanks a lot for calling in. As you mentioned, Canyon, just a gauntlet of a road streak to go through just get to that first game. Have a safe drive home, Phil, and we always appreciate you calling in for us. Well, that's right. We got 6A coming up. Tascosa taking on Plainview tonight at Dick Bivens. Of course, we're going to cross some state lines as well. We're going to give you those land of enchantment scores as well as Oklahoma. And don't forget, we still got Battle of the Bands, Fan of the Week also hit and play in case you missed any of those words as well. A lot of great stuff still to come. You're watching the wrap-up.